Okay, unless any other motions on this particular item, I'm gonna to go to uh, item number 11, our general consent calendar. Before we go and um, go to that um, item number seven um, is the, well, under item number seven, uh, the Yushi agreement is off the consent calendar. I've, I've removed it. So you won't be voting on under number seven, the Yushi. So uh, at this time, is there anything that board members request to be full off the, the consent calendar? Board member Earl, I'm trying to catch up on this too. Board member Earl, did you have something you want to take off? Yes, I had a question, but if you could pull off, give me one second. Uh, number 13, the pupil accounting. Okay, we got that. Anything else, Bolter? Um, yes, Board I just had Bolter? a question. Yes, I had a question regarding um, yeah, the Yeah, why, why don't you? Ask your question. Um, I just wanted to know about the U of U contract, what exactly that entailed. So you it might need to be taken pulled, off. Answer that pulled off. Is that back on what number? Is number that back seven. on seven. I'm trying to remember them all. No. Yeah. That would be seven. the data. So you want to pull. The University of Utah data sharing agreement, which is under. No, oh, I just lost it. Oh. So this item 11 is what is it? Item 7? Item 7. So I think item it seven. Might have been it was under, 7. Under okay. 7. Yeah. Okay. Not the Yushi, but okay. So under, under 7, we will pull. Pull that until your question's answered. So that's under seven, the U of U. Okay, anything else that Board Member Belknap? Yes, going back and forth on your screens, just a little, a little tits difficult. Um, the number 15, the Utah Digital Media Festival. Number 15, did you say? Yep. Did you say 15? Yes. Okay. Okay. We're just a fan in the. Yep. Please unraise your hands if you don't have something left. I think we're, okay. I think we're so there. Okay. Yeah. I'm taking a motion to approve the general consent calendar with items that on 13, seven and 15 on the seven is the U of U and then 13 being removed. We'll put that to a vote. Or don't, do so I have move. a motion? I move. So, so move. Second calendar. I'll second it. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay. Not seeing any discussion with, on that, we will vote. Board Member Belknap. Aye. Board Member Bolter. Aye. Board Member Cannon. Aye. Board Member, uh, or Vice Chair Cummins. Aye. Board Member Davis. Aye. Board Member Earl. Board Member Earl. Oh. Aye. Aye. <laughs> okay, got it. Board Member Gravett. Aye. Board Member Hansen. Aye. 
Board Member Haynes. Aye. Our Councilman Zen. Aye. Board Member, Board Member Lear. Aye. Board Member Marsh. Aye. Board Member Thorpe. Aye. Okay, voting is unanimous. We'll go to the consent. And those that were polled, we have under item 13, um, board member Earl. I missed that. I'm going to it. I, gonna, okay. So my that. question has to do with, um, since we have this open competent, competency-based education, and specifically, there's somewhere we tie our competency-based education to our state standards, or are those left open to um, whatever standards the entity that they're contracting with decides to do? I just say, do we have a specific place that we tie those into each other? Well, we can get staff and let somebody not see. Okay. Um, I'll wait on this. So. Okay, here we go. Here we come on up. Hi there, Siri Young, our Director of Strategic Initiatives. So currently we do not have any language that ties our competencies specifically to our standards. We are working on developing those competencies in alignment with Utah's portrait of a graduate. So they actually could, in theory, they could be anything and they're not necessarily, I, I say anything, but as long as they're in the scope of science or whatever, they don't necessarily tie to the standards that we've spent time writing. Is that accurate? So the existing language um, in Rule 419 um, is, is not something that we were looking to edit with this particular set of amendments, mainly because we're still in the process of developing those competencies. So we just left that language as is. And so I don't have any um, additional detail or clarification related to um, what it has been up until now. Okay, so as those come through, we're going to tie those to our standards. Is that my understanding then? Over time. So the development of competencies will be specific to Utah's portrait of a graduate. They will also be grade banded. Um, and honestly, I would defer to our director of teaching and learning, Jennifer Thronson, in regards to then the steps that come after those competencies in regards and relationship to the standards. Okay. Was there any other staff that wanted to weigh in on any of these questions? And I'll let, I'll see what we can find on. Is there staff that's jumping on? No. Any staff jumping on? Is that Jennifer Thompson? Hi, I'm Jennifer here. Just In terms of what Sarah shared, is kind of where we are. Um, Will you say your name and all of yes. that for the. Jennifer. Uh, this is not <laughs> uh, Jennifer Thronson, Director of Teaching and Learning. And so, uh, as Sarah explained, we are in the kind of phases of developing the competencies, and particularly with what the graduate, our core standards are the uh, mastery section, where you have academic mastery, digital literacy, and so on. And so, there will be opportunity for us to coordinate our standards with the competencies for them to see those direct connections moving forward. Um, but until we develop those competencies, Finding that alignment and uh, coordination is, is yet to be done. So we're yet to decide if we're going to align them with our standards. Is am I understanding that right? That's As correct. they competency moves forward, we'll decide whether or not they'll be aligned to our standards. Yeah, I think the standards should inform the competency development, but because our standards change and competencies may not change at the same rate. Uh, so, for example, ELA standards are up for revision next year. If we build the competencies based on standards, then the competencies also have to adjust when we do the revision to the standards. So there's some complexities there for us to work through on um, which comes first. Do they write independently but inform each other, or are they uniquely tied? Um, that we still have yet. Kind of okay, so let me, let me make sure I understand. So our competencies don't necessarily align with our standards, and they may not. Am I understanding that? They could. But they I, think that, I think that's a good way to think about it, yes. Okay. Okay, is there any other? 
Vice Chair Brenda Cummins. <clears throat> I move the, the board approves um, R277419 draft two on second and final reading. Do I have a second? I'll second. Board member Thorpe. Okay, I'm not seeing any discussion. Okay, let's follow. Let's, let's follow the same order that we kind of, so get ready board members. Um, board member Belknap? No. no. Board member Bolter? No. No. Board member Cannon? Yes. Vice Chair Brittany Cummins? Yes. Board member Davis? Yes. Board member Earl? No. Board member Gravett? Aye. Board member Hansen? Yes. Board member Haynes? Aye. Board member Lear? Aye. Board member Marsh? Aye. Board member Thorpe? Aye. And Mark Huntsman, then aye. The motion passes. Um, I have three nays, two hundreds. Okay. All right. Um, board member Balter, do you want to speak to your University of Utah? I've got to open it back up here under item seven. Let's see, that would have been under uh, data sharing agreements. Yes, thank you. Um, so I just had a question. I know that this is an agreement for the University of Utah to analyze our data um, from the proficiency testing of the dual language immersion students. I'm just wondering if we don't already do that at the USBE level, and then if we do, why, why would we need the University of Utah? So I just wanted some clarification on that. Okay. Is somebody from staff? Yeah, I can speak to that. Jennifer Thrudson, Director of Teaching and Learning, if you'd like. Okay, thank you. So, um, the, Thompson, uh, please. so the University of Utah did um, the study originally for the USBE, and so this would be to enhance that original study. We have um, discussions happening with our statistics folks right now to engage them in the separate work. Uh, given that we haven't done internal work around this. And so our dual immersion specialist in our department in teaching and learning, as well as the data and statistics team has engaged in initial discussions and they anticipated to have some results uh, within the next couple of months in this space around local data collection. So there's opportunity locally as well. We have yet to do that. And the University of Utah did the first initial study related to dual language immersion. And this would be kind of to extend that initial uh, analysis. Oh, okay, so they've already done this before. Yeah. For okay, I was wondering okay. that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other um, questions? No. Yeah. Okay. Vice Chair Brittany Cummins. Uh, I move that we approve the data sharing agreement with the University of Utah. I Do second. I second. I second it. Any discussion to the motion? So motion before the board is to approve the USBE interagency data sharing agreement with University of Utah. We'll vote. <clears throat> board member Belknap. Aye. Um, board member Bolter. Aye. Board member Cannon. Aye. Vice Chair Brittany Cummins. Aye. Board member Davis. Aye. Board member Earl. Aye. Board member Gravett? Aye. Board member Hansen? Aye. Board member Haynes? Aye. I'm an aye, Mark Huntsman. Board member Lear? Aye. Board member Marsh? Aye. Board member Thorpe? Aye. And voting was unanimous. Okay. Um, board member Belknap, um, 
we wanted to uh, say we we're going to speak to item 15 on the consent the co-sponsorship with the utah digital media arts festival um yes i just had um a couple of questions one how is this being advertised and if it's being advertised through the schools then do they the schools have this on their fee schedule because if it's a sponsorship through the school so that would be one and the other one this is supposed to be on may 5th and will it cancel and can students and or can we as the, one of the partnering schools get the funding back if it's canceled because of the pandemic okay now this is an information item again and not an action item so it's what staff to show anybody that's going to weigh in on this one? Talia, I Chair, think. Chair Huntsman, can Talia, Talia Longhurst weigh in on this one? You bet, please. Is Leah on? I, I think I am. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Talia Longhurst, <clears throat> Director of Career and Technical Education. Uh, currently, this event has not yet been canceled. It's scheduled for May 5th, which is after UVU's graduation was scheduled. UVU has asked to take one more week before they decide if the event will be canceled or not, but for now it is still uh, planned to be held. They are also making some contingency plans for a virtual event, should that be the case. Um, the LEAs are aware of the school fee issues and uh, anything that would be charged to students would have to be on the school fee plan. Does that answer all of your questions, Board Member Bell now? Um, Chair, the, the last one for Lee is, um, can we get our money back if it's canceled indefinitely and can the students? So the answer to that is it depends. It depends on whether or not the event becomes a virtual event. If it, if it becomes virtual, then we would still pay all or a portion of the money, depending upon how much they're able to transition to a virtual event. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> That's it. Okay. That's it. Okay. Well, thank you. That concludes our consent portion of our agenda. We're getting ready to go into our committee re reports. And we're, again, we're specifically, well, we're only gonna mention the actionable I items here. Um, we'll start with, we don't have any action. So we, didn't, we don't have to report for action on our audit committee. Okay, um, 